This video demonstrates how to bleed the brake lines on a tandem axle trailer which is equipped with UFP hydraulic disc brakes on one axle. One person may perform the bleeding process if a power bleeder and UFP's bleeder clamp assembly is used. The following tools and supplies will be needed. Brake fluid is hazardous and corrosive. Use caution when handling brake fluid. Prepare the pressure bleeder by following the instructions that came with the pressure bleeder. Fill the pressure bleeder with brake fluid according to the pressure bleeder instructions. Attach the UFP bleeder clamp assembly to the pressure bleeder. Next, attach the bleeder clamp to the actuator. Properly adjust the bleeder clamp. The pressure in the power bleeder should not exceed 18 pounds per square inch. Exceeding 18 pounds per square inch of pressure will damage the diaphragm and cause the pressure bleeder to leak. Turn on the valve at the pressure bleeder and check for leaks where the bleeder head enters the master cylinder reservoir. If there are no leaks, the brakes are ready to be bled. Begin the bleeding process with the brake located farthest away from the actuator. If the trailer has brakes on multiple axles, begin the bleeding process on the rear axle, starting with the brake at the farthest end of the brake line. At the brake located farthest from the actuator, locate the bleeder screw on top of the caliper body. Connect the clear bleeder hose to the bleeder screw and place the free end of the hose in the clear waste container. Using the brake line wrench, loosen the bleeder screw. Observe the resulting flow of the brake fluid. When there are no air bubbles remaining in the fluid, tighten the bleeder screw to stop the flow of brake fluid. Repeat the bleeding process on the brake located on the opposite side of the same axle. If your trailer is equipped with tandem brake axles, start with the rear axles, move to the front axles. Repeat the bleeding process on rear axle brakes a second time to ensure all air has been purged from the system. After bleeding the brakes, relieve the pressure in the pressure bleeder. Close the valve at the bleeder head and slowly remove the clamp assembly so brake fluid isn't spilled. Next, check the brake fluid level in the actuator's master cylinder. Brake fluid in the reservoir should just touch the end of the dipstick on the fill plug when the fill plug is completely inserted into the fill hole. Check to make sure bleeding of the brake system was done properly by stroking the pushrod assembly with a screwdriver and verify that the brake rotor cannot be rotated. When pressure is applied to the pushrod, the tire should not spin. Push up on the safety release bracket to make sure the pushrod is in the released position. You may refer to the instructions that have been provided with your pressure bleeder to complete the bleeding process. This concludes the Dexter approved instructions on using a power bleeder for the brake bleeding procedure.